Keeping salt flowing in the moisture of a cruising boat can be quite a challenge. Luckily, shakers with a secure seal can help, and I have just the one to recommend. Hi there, I'm Carolyn Sherlock, and on this episode of the Boat Galley Podcast, I'll share my best solutions for making sure your salt doesn't become a clumpy mess on board. Now, the Boat Galley Podcast is sponsored by Fast Seas. Plan your next passage using Fast Seas. Whether you're after speed or comfort, Fast Seas will find the optimum route to get you to your destination. FastSeas.com, making weather routing simple. Use coupon code GALLEY2018 at FastSeas.com for an exclusive 10% discount. Okay, let's talk a little bit about salt and pepper shakers. I know, I know, it's a weird topic to have a whole podcast on, and yet it's one of the things that drove me absolutely bonkers the first year or so that we were cruising. On a boat, it's imperative to have a salt shaker with an airtight lid. Without it, there's no chance you'll actually be able to shake salt out of it. The salt picks up moisture and will just clump and clog the holes. Or... In fact, if it gets too much moisture, it'll actually turn into a salty liquid. Now, for years, both cruising and camping, we'd use the Rubbermaid salt and pepper shakers with great results. And they worked. I was really disappointed recently when a friend told me that Rubbermaid had changed their salt shaker design, and the new design just didn't work. Seriously, when I went and got a set, It's true, they didn't. The other option, however, is a Tupperware shaker. Okay, Rubbermaid's new design just doesn't form a good enough seal. I cannot recommend it at all. Not only does it let moisture in, but it can also just flip open if the shaker tips over. Don't buy it. Instead, get a hold of the Tupperware salt and shop pepper shakers. You can buy them on Amazon and many other places. They come in a couple of different sizes and several different colors. Yes, they are a little more expensive than the Rubbermaid ones, but they actually do the job. Now, the one complaint that people have with the Tupperware shakers or the old Rubbermaid shakers is that the holes are a little bit small for the salt or pepper to shake freely. What you do is you take a paper clip or a needle and enlarge each hole just slightly. Also, be sure to put a few grains of rice or dried beans into the salt shaker. That will absorb any humidity that does get in when you've got the lid off the shaker using it or when you're refilling it. The rice will absorb that extra moisture. If you get salt in a larger container, as is typical in the U.S. and larger cities elsewhere, Be sure that the big container you filled is tightly sealed in a freezer Ziploc with some rice in it, that you need to keep that totally, basically air-free, or at least so you're not exchanging air in and out all the time. In some places, like in Mexico and so forth, we could only buy bulk salt in little baggies. I always transferred it to a more airtight container, either using double freezer Ziplocs or a lock and lock container or that type of a container that's got both the latches and the gasketing seal. And I always threw in either some rice or some dried beans. Okay, hopefully you found this information useful and will keep your salt flowing as well as your pepper going well. In the heat, keeping the moist hot air out of your pepper will also keep it more flavorful. Anyways, if you like this, be sure to subscribe and please tell your friends about the Boat Galley podcast. Until next week then, thanks. 